Hello friends, family and other creatures of the sea and welcome to a high level series from the most recent tournament held in Dallas, the ESL Master Spring, I believe it's called. This is Hero vs. Maru. Now I went there myself as well. One of the fun things about visiting StarCraft 2 events is that you actually tend to watch <laughs> less StarCraft than if you were just sitting at home. If you're busy, you know, talking, getting some food or you know, just joking around or whatever. So. It's actually pretty difficult to catch complete games. I think I watched like two or three series in its entirety um, over the course of three days. But luckily the replay pack was released and now I have uh, time to go over uh, a lot of these games, starting with Hero vs. Maru, which in my opinion is um, one of the most interesting uh, types of series that we could have. We have Maru, who is aggressive, um, but also strong in mid and late game. And we have Hero, who... Honestly, recently has been playing more standard StarCraft 2, especially in the Protoss versus Terran matchup, but always kind of has these weird aces up his sleeve, this ability to turn what is supposed to be a regular game into a weird and wonky game. And so far, uh, we're seeing a little bit of that. We have a full wall with a Corby for Nexus, double gas, pre-Nexus. Now this is weird this is odd this is different from what we usually see usually in this matchup we get our nexus off of a single gas this was off of two gas that means that hero's goal here most likely is to not deny scouting with this initial stalker look at that initial stalker scout and from here on out go into a stargate this is a rare opener usually when we see fast stalkers it's going to go either into a robotics facility or a twilight council and i think that is kind of what Hero is playing around with here, saying, hey, I'm going to mine a little bit more gas earlier, have less minerals. My gold base, hopefully, is going to make up for that. And I'm going to rush out this Stargate tech much faster than usual. And also on the back of a Stalker. So Reaper Scout here going to be extremely important for, uh, for Maru. Ideally, get some information as to what is kicking off. It's going to be an Oracle as the first unit. Another Adept being... Uh, build here as well as a battery going up in the natural base double cyclone opener into two hellion with a proxy starport liberator to top things off as we have a, yeah, a typical dynasty game really this is one of these maps where we see this type of stuff fairly frequently and with this type of stuff i just mean build orders that aren't really build orders until they met until they meet on dynasty like dynasty is the map that can make anything into a build order that is um, somewhat viable Double Cyclones here, locking onto that Stalker. Reaper Grenade's not going to blast this Stalker across the mineral patches. That would have been quite something. We'll deny a little bit of mining here, though. Double Hellion is now moving towards the main as the Oracle hits the other side of the map, where Maru has started constructing his own command center. Sadly, uh, we'll not finish it anytime soon. It's the Double Hellions hitting the main base. We'll find a battery here. Battery in the natural has been taken out. Liberator set up, as well as the Hellions coming in. Uh, causing a little bit of chaos. Nine SCVs falling, 10 SCVs going down. That brings this to 33 workers to 17, but an awkward situation in which neither player is going to be mining from their natural anytime soon. And despite Hero being up in workers by a pretty significant portion, he actually is down in income currently. Uh, that's due to the fact that there is a mule mining and the fact that Hero is not mining at all from his own natural. Here comes the super battery, it's going to be activated. Triple Phoenix is helping out as well, Liberator taking a lot of damage. Will most likely fall, no, stays alive. Bunker does get cancelled as another Cyclone shows up. I think Hero, uh, perhaps a bit over eager to push this back with just air units, is not quite going to succeed. We'll lose a couple more workers here, as four Cyclones as well as a Viking, for now capable of denying the mining on this base. Natural has finished on the other side of the map. Maru can now start worker production there as well as mining on that gold base. If this Nexus falls, we're going to be in a very awkward spot. It's going to be four Cyclones, one more on the way. What do we have over here? Another Liberator coming in as well. Good lift out of Hero. It's going to allow him to take out a Cyclone. Yes, it will. Another Stalker warp in. What is the gate count actually at this point? We're only at a single gate, so the production not necessarily great here for our Protoss player. Super battery, rare, well, relatively close to being available once more starts mining, perhaps as a bait, but at the same time, that could also, you know, could also lose you a bunch of workers. Positioning on the Cyclones here is phenomenal, by the way. Look how many workers here are falling. At the same time, we have the Phoenixes plus Oracle making their way across the map. We'll clear a bunch of these workers. As we basically have a base trade, but Hero not having the ability to actually attack his opponent's base. 
Mauro, the only one that can actually take the uh, the base out, and that's exactly what's gonna happen. Oracle will clear a lot of these workers, and there's no defense here whatsoever. There's plenty of phoenixes, so even a single cyclone is not really gonna do the trick. This phoenix gets taken out while moving across the map. Worker count is 33 to 19. Base count is one versus two. Uh, the gateway count only being at one is actually an issue as a second gate gets added into the mix here. A little bit of a supply block here as well for a hero who um, has a decent phoenix count. He's at four, has four stalkers. He's gonna build his natural in his uh, non-gold base location. I think I saw extra barracks being added in as well. Okay, so we have good production for Maru. We have more bases for Maru. We have a decent amount of Cyclones, but if all of them get lifted, Stalkers actually could uh, help out here on the ground. A lot of these Cyclones are going to end up falling. We have three remaining. One Viking that is very low, one Liberator that is very low. Another Cyclone is going to get lifted. Will end up going down. This Liberator is going to get repaired and will survive. Every single Phoenix will end up falling. And I think with that, it's going to be the end of this, uh, this part of the aggression. We still have 35 workers to 26. But as there's no real follow-up tech here for a hero, I'm struggling to see what his plan is going to be. Losing all of his assets in the Phoenixes and the Oracles is also not great. And I think Maru at this point can actually transition into a real... Well, I'm not sure if you would even call it a macro game, but into a more standard setup. Uh, reactors on the barracks, perhaps. Um, double medevac production on the reactor starport. I really think some type of add-ons here would be good, and eBay could be helpful as well. Maru, for now, is just going to be committing to a oh, a bit more of a, an all-in-ish setup as the Marines plus Cyclone move downstairs. Phoenix is going to end up falling as these Stalkers stay alive. There's still three Cyclones around. The new Oracle shows up as well with Blink being researched. I mean, there's really no incentive for Maru to try and move down this ramp until Stim finishes, until these medevacs are out. I think right now we might have the ability to go for a bit of a like a double drop or something like that. Cyclone's gonna lock on the Oracle. Oracle will escape despite the Viking being there to help out as well. Dark Shrine's gonna get scouted instantly by this Liberator. That's a big deal. Because that was a potential comeback mechanism here for Hero. Hero is outmining his opponent. It's gonna be outmining his opponent um, to a bigger degree the moment this base ends up finishing on the gold minerals. The problem is just that He's going to have Blink. And he's only barely going to have Blink. Actually, I'm not even sure if he's going to have Blink. Um, but there's not going to be charge. He's going to be getting a lot of minerals. It feels like Maru is setting up for a pretty powerful timing. I'm not sure what Maru's plan is here. Seems to be going in towards the third base location. Denying a little bit of mining there. Liberator's going to join up with the main army. The Cyclone show up. And we've, <laughs> we've seen this exact setup before already. Combat shield about 65% done. Is any harass here? No. Anything here? No. So just a straight up attack. Of course, Hero doesn't know that. So he needs to be, you know, aware of the possibility that something might hit his natural. Whether it's going to be a drop or just a single unit like a Liberator. Just a run by or something. It's all going to be possible. Oh! Attacks his own Cyclone there. Bit of a mistake. I actually think that Maru doesn't even really need to be here attacking the Nexus. He can just be happy denying the mining because he's building his own third base here. So we have Hero moving forward, Blink helping out. Liberator needs to unseage. He's going to resiege here. And indeed, he's going to be moving back just a tiny tad, making it harder to attack this Liberator. Lots of Stalkers are going to end up falling. At the same time, we have DTs on the other side of the map. No turrets were ready. We have plenty of scans available. Six SEVs do end up falling, as this DT isn't even going to force out another scan. Sloppy control out of our Protoss player, who is now starting to chase this army with his stalkers. Eight gateways are out versus three barracks. Two more barracks on the way. No upgrades, except, of course, for Blink. Gonna blink away. We'll probably end up losing one stalker. No, gets to escape. Lucky you. New DT is gonna show up, and... Honestly, it feels like the same spot is just going to get hit again and again and again here by Maru. Maru loves this position. He loves going in there. He says, hey, you can't easily reinforce outside. Defending the mineral line from inside is, quite frankly, impossible. As these stalkers, now with a, a bad blink as well, are going to get caught in a corner. Trying to walk through mineral patches, which is not something they're capable of. And 
As a result, we'll lose a lot of stalkers here in a world of trouble, to be honest. 76 supply to 102. Does have a robotics facility on the way. It's gonna just rebuild his third base somewhere else, but that's not really a viable play if you're equaling workers against a Terran that already has three bases as well. It's gonna be up in upgrades. And with fairly decent infrastructure. Five barracks, one, one factory, one starport. Maru will not be requiring any extra infrastructure for the next uh, two, three minutes until his 4CC finishes, honestly. He will not quite require it. He's not building a lot of workers, though. And as a result, he's going to put himself a bit more all in than perhaps he needs to be. Hero with some solid blink control is going to take out that Viking. Super battery gets activated. So we get a couple of force fields charge finishing up in about a minute or, or sorry, in a second or so. Get the Phoenix with the lift on the tank uh, on top of the screen. But yeah, the zealot count is simply not high enough. Hallucinated Colossus do not, do not do any damage. And uh, Hero probably will be forced to tap out. We get a final scan as the Observer goes down. Two more zealots get warped in. But this game one is going to go in favor of Maru after a uh, very dynamic early game here on Dynasty. That brings us to Psy Delta. Where we're seeing a uh, most likely less interactive early game. Hero with a very fast Nexus, no scout. While Maru with a double gas opener. Double gas openers have really been taken over as of late, I feel like. Um, there was a period where Terran players really enjoyed playing these types of one gas quick expanse. I think, I think that time period is behind us. Terrans just love getting those fast factory units, these, these quick star ports. And Protoss players, well, they're struggling. They're struggling with it. They really are. Stalker first once again. So really a very similar type of setup here. This time without a scout though. And a much faster Nexus. Of course, this base also doesn't have a gold. But really kind of a, a cool setup. We have a quick cyclone coming out. A really quick cyclone. This is what we call an anti-adept cyclone. It gets built at, at such a high, high speed that... It's almost in time to deal with the first Adept. It's not quite in time, but if the Adept commits, the Adept is going to die majority of the time. And of course, you also have the Reaper for a potential counterattack. Now, Hero here is not actually planning on doing anything with an Adept. Maru scouts, doesn't get any information. This is, I think in the current map pool, the only map where this is possible, where you can have a two-building wall um, that doesn't include the pylon and thus allows you to hide the tech. So what Maru's gonna try, is gonna try to burst over this wall. This is a very common move. Throws down the grenade, messes it up. Nice. <laughs> oh, hoo -hoo! That's a nice surround as well there by Hero. That was really neat. I think he was expecting that. Because he was already positioning that Stalker in a, in a six spot. And Maru has decided what he's gonna be doing. He's gonna go for a... Like a... A factory triple CC double barracks type of setup personally not a huge fan of this build not a huge fan of this build from the uh, double gas opener just personally now one of the reasons for this is because if you're opening with two fast gases oh well it's pretty big actually killing that phoenix but let me finish my story when you're opening up with two fast gases and this might come as a surprise to some of you what you're doing is that you're collecting a lot of gas and we can see that right here already. We see Maru is floating about 350 gas. Okay. This is a build that is not efficient whatsoever. This is one of the least efficient builds. Builds that get a lot of gas and don't use it are not efficient. It costs a lot of minerals to get gas. And if you want to increase your economy, what you want is more minerals often. Because minerals are the eco resource, right? SEVs, depots, command centers, orbital commands. All of those require minerals and not gas so if you focus very heavily on early gas it means that your eco actually sucks and the reason why some terrans do play this build is because it allows them to kind of it's kind of a mind game it's like oh i'm playing two gas unlikely that i'm going triple cc right eh, wrong then they play the triple cc but it's a very inefficient way of playing a triple cc opener and um despite hero losing that initial phoenix 
I think Hero's going to be quite happy in this game because he got the full info relatively quickly. The eco is going to suck. As you can see, there's fairly little Marines out. There's 11 Marines out. We do have Stim and Combat on the way. We have a Starport coming in as well, uh, as well as double eBays. But the supplies should heavily be favoring Hero. Really heavily be favoring Hero. Like, this is not going to... Usually as a Terran player, if you're playing a triple CC opener, it kind of sucks if the Protoss player has equal, like even supplies, the same amount of supply as you have. I believe here that Hero is going to significantly outperform his opponent's supply, maybe by 10, 15 uh, at the moment when it matters. And the moment that matters is when this third CC is going to be taken. That is really the moment when it will matter. What was that cancel? We cancel the reactor. It's going to go instead for uh, something else. Stalker's now moving in forward as well. Tank is going to be built. Hero here committing heavily to uh, Blink Stalkers off of a single Phoenix, which is cool. I, I like that. I really do like that. He's on low gas count as well. And this is not really a timing where I expected Hero to be capable of doing anything. And I don't think this was a timing where Maru expected his opponent to, to be capable of doing anything. We have seven gateways out, one of those being proxied as well. Lots of Zealots there. Sentry in. You see Hero uh, right now pulling ahead in supply. Ooh. Good lord. This is a risky move. For two reasons. If that Medivac gets caught, he's dead. But also, if Hero decides to attack right now, that's eight Marines you're missing. And indeed, Maru immediately tries to boost it back. As we can see on the minimap, at the same time, we have this fight. Guardian Shield not quite covering the Zealots. So it's busy attacking a depot, but the unit count here is so freaking big. Medivac coming in from the side is going to get sniped. These Marines will not be of any help. And this is the problem with this build. If it gets scouted quickly and a Protoss player responds appropriately, which I think Hero did, it's just not a very good build due to the fact that you're floating three, four, five hundred gas in the first four minutes of a game. It's completely inefficient. Here we go, big blink forward. Tank is going to get sniped as uh, Hero is connecting with all of these Marines and Marauders. 32 SCVs have fallen. Yes, you have 1-1 one, one upgrades. Yes, you have five barracks, but uh, it's 23 army supply to 48, 60 workers to 24. I think, Maru, you're going to be in a little bit of trouble. This 30 CC hasn't achieved anything, hasn't been capable of even landing. All it did is throw down some mules, get some SCVs out. That's not good enough. GG gets called, Hero. Ties up the series. And I think that's one of those games where if you're Maru, it's going to feel bad, but at the same time, it's like, well, I couldn't have done much different with the cards that I was dealt, or, well, the cards that, you know, you dealt yourselves. In StarCraft, of course, you kind of get to pick your own cards. You get to pick your own build order. It, but it is one of those things where it's like, okay, I picked that build order. My opponent quickly scouted me with a Phoenix. And, you know, that's that's pretty much it. That That's what... that That's all you, you can do from there on out. Like, you get quickly scouted. You're just going to be down 25, you know, 20, 25 supply or so. I think Hero responded well there. And I think this is something that's very typical of Hero is where some players will look at what Maru was doing and say, oh, wow, triple CC, I can be very greedy. Uh, and Hero looks at us as, wow, triple CC, I can be fairly greedy early on, and then I can kill you. So it's like a, a different type of approach, a much more aggressive, uh, centered approach out of Hero, which is really kind of his bread and butter. Something you can also play into as a Terran player, of course. Let's not forget about that that it is completely viable to kind of go for defensive timings against Hero because he often likes to skip uh, things that other Pro Protoss players find necessary, like building upgrades, for example, or a robotics facility. And Hero says, you know what I'll do? I don't get those things, and I'm just going to kill you. I'll have more gateway units. And if you have, like, a nice tank siege up, uh, that can suck for Hero, for sure. For now, though, it's going to go for a three-gate robo. Two-gate robo? Three-gate robo, look at that. Three gates and a robotics facility. Usually I'd say this is going to go into something aggressive. Um, and I kind of still want to say that. It's going for four gases. And also this is not a great map for three gate robo. Because there's no low ground area you can attack. In order to attack an area you need to blink in. And once you're blinked in, you're committed. And that's very scary. Commitment is scary, especially in StarCraft 2. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mine's not quite gonna get the hits that they wanted. 
got to force another pull away, though. As, uh, oh, really nice on Burrow there out of Maru. It's going to keep this alive for just a little bit longer. It's going to micro it back as well. Honestly, Maru absolutely out-controlling his opponent here, but this split is going to be good. We have some target fire, which means more mining time denied. And so far, honestly, three mines for two probes and one stalker doesn't look great for Maru necessarily, but the amount of mining time that has been lost does look pretty great. As this mine's going to come back in, uh, Medivac is going to end up falling, but one or two more probes might end up dying too. Hero with very solid pool time responses, by the way. He's going to lose quite a bit of mining time. We actually are going to see something aggressive. It's going to be... I thought we had a prism here. No, we don't. Okay, it's just going to be a lot of stalkers across the map with a Robo Bay behind this. There's a tank. No way you can... Oh my god. I was going to say there's no way you blink in here, but... Hero's like, look at this. <laughs> I will blink in here. He goes for it. It's going to kill two SEVs and lose two stalkers. Probably... Maybe even all... Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, maybe Hero should have listened to me. Two SEVs for three Stalkers is not a great trade. Some people even would call it a bad trade. Because you invested a lot more than your opponent lost. It's very scary on this map to blink in, as I said. Committing on this map is just generally quite terrible. Uh, two tanks can cover the entire main base. And they can also be safe against the first blink in. So, yeah, it's, it's just not great. Let's face it. Colossus as a follow-up here. Uh, Hero is going to be uh, tickling these depots. It's going to force Maru to pull his tank a little bit further forward. It's one Marine that goes down. Raven taking a bit of damage as well. Depot is not going to go down. Two observers now across the map. We have another gateway in here as well. As well as a forge. Charge. Forge. What else do we have over here? Not much, to be honest. Low gateway count, which is pretty much the standard when going for four gas into Colossus. It's one of these build orders where you get your infrastructure fairly late. So with a lot of Protoss player, with a lot of Protoss builds, what you do is you get the infrastructure done before the three Rex timing hits. When you're playing Colossus, you don't really, you can't afford a Robo Bay, Colossus, upgrades, uh, and a lot of infrastructure. So what you usually end up doing is you stay on a relatively low gateway count, which you extensively use. So you warp in a lot of stalkers, maybe a couple of zealots, a sentry, and you get Colossus for the first initial defending timing. And then after you defend that, you can either throw down a fort base, depending on how well it went, or you add in extra gateways if you want to go for a bit of an attack yourself. You have stalkers now moving in position defensively. Colossus is nearby as well. Super battery gets activated. This is a good defense here for heroes. Gonna snipe both of these meta effects. As the Colossus comes in, the Marauder count is pathetic. There's only a single one. And it's gonna be six, seven probes. Um, which, once again, I mean, it's a decent amount of damage. But I don't think it's enough for the amount of map control. For the amount of pressure that Maru has just lost. Uh, the, the ability to put on pressure. I, I think this was not worth it. Hero, as a result, is going to respond with a couple extra gateways as well as a nexus. And he's still going to go for an attack. I'd be shocked if he commits to this attack. Because he, A, doesn't have the gateway count. And B, is investing in a lot of infrastructure behind this. We have that second forge. We have the two gateways. We have the fort nexus coming in. Um, we practically have, what, like uh, maybe 900 minerals or so. Uh, being invested in things that are in this push. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for Hero to go for a committed fight. However, he does have map control after clearing both of those medevacs. So he can just kind of poke on the map and just not commit into this, this sieged up, mined up position. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. It's adding um, even more gateways. Oh, what the hell is this? Kind of wild. Um, and it's just poking. He's poking because he's safe. He knows he can't really be jumped here. And, well, he thinks he can't be jumped here. I sometimes also think that, and then I get jumped and I die. He's adding a couple of sentries to make this move out basically safer. Saying, hey, if you want to chase me, I can defensively force field or I can force field a couple of units in. He's just kind of sharking around here, if anything. Has the thermal lens. Doesn't have a lot of vision, though, right now. So he's lost both of his observers. But he's established kind of his, his, his dominance out on the map. He's invested in a lot of infrastructure. He's still getting those upgrades. But as his goal has pretty much finished up at this point, 
I'm loving his position. It's going to be difficult for Maru to move out. We have Maru with tank production, 1-1 one, one upgrades. Um, one of the two Ebays have been sniped. There's no armor upgrade coming in. I actually think Maru is just going to commit to an all-in here. I don't entirely see how Maru is going to transition into a really a late game. We have 10 gateways out. We have double forges. You have practically continuous disruptor production. So the disruptor count is already fairly decent. Nice map vision as well out of here. I'd love to see another pylon down here. We once again have the same blink in the main base. If you can snipe one or two of these goals, that would be huge. Even just baiting out these uh, these EMPs is, is big as well. Two, three Vikings end up falling. These are great trades here for Hero. The, the thing that Hero wants is he basically wants continuous trades from this point on out that are somewhat even. And that was a somewhat even trade. He lost, what, four or five Stalkers, killed a Ghost and three Vikings. He's going to be just fine with that. He's outmining his opponent by about 800 minerals a minute. He's taking a fifth base as well. And he's keeping his opponent... Uh, ooh, kind of on the back foot. We're going to have a big jump in here. That does surprise me. Um, especially given the fact that it, it doesn't feel like Maru... You know, the, is, is, trying on doing, is trying to do something else here. He's not really attempting to take a fourth base yet. Usually, at this point, you want to strike the moment your opponent kind of starts splitting up army. Whether it is to, tr to try and attack the Protoss player or whether it is to um, try and take a fourth base where you need to spread yourself a lot more thin as our Terran player here. I think those are usually key moments. Gateway count, by the way, is going to go up to 12 here. I'd love to see a second robotics facility, but I'm a big fan of the upgrades. Ooh, I'm a bunch of disruptor shots. Going to take out one tank. I was going to actually chase. Uh, defensive force field will get thrown down. Zealot count fairly high. We're going to go up to 23. The more zealots you see in an army, the more of a timer the army is on. Zealots are not great once the armies gets maxed out, but they usually are great before that time because they allow you to really kind of jump on an army. Maru is now moving over towards the fort base location. Hero is trying to kind of burst his position and I wonder if he can. There's no prism, which means there's no second avenue of attack. I think that would be huge. You have nine more zealots coming in. That's going to bring the zealot count to 34. If Maru can get a good defensive fight here, he might be back into the game, but getting a good defensive fight will be tricky. As we have a big blink forward, disruptor shots will need to move in forward. A couple more tanks will fall. I think three tanks going down there, 12 SCVs as well falling. And this is the type of fight that Hero loves. He loses a bunch of zealots, he kills a bunch of key units. And he's still outmining his opponent by a significant margin. Maru now trying to move over towards the left side. I think Hiro is aware of that. Has some vision. And uh, judging by his army movement, knows where he needs to strike. Ideally before the planetary uh, finishes up, by the way. Ooh, that was a bad blink forward. Mine is going to connect. A couple of stalkers will end up falling. And if Hiro wants to play a heavy zealot style, he's going to need to continue trading here. Um, you don't want to let your opponent get to a higher supply. What you want is just a continuous trade. You don't want to have a bank. You want to be fighting, fighting, fighting. And having a somewhat uh, decent resources lost, which so far has been the case. He's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting. And I think this is where we're going to send it. He's not going to wait for his plus three attack, at least not quite yet. I'm trying to find an angle, but uh, these tanks are well positioned. We have three more mines moving in forward as well. Ghost count is solid too. Hero's going to need to max out again. He's taking a sixth base. And this looks really great for Hero. But once again, his army consisting of pure zealots is um, is losing some of its value. It really is. Ooh, this Raptor shot's actually quite good. Maru, sloppy control there. Really nothing going on and ends up losing about 10, 12 supply. There is a tank here. There's a command center on the way. Gonna see a rotation right now. Maru's gonna see that fairly late. As a result, it's gonna lose a lot of workers here. This is a, a neat move out of Hero. It's gonna be moving in forward. So that's a bit too far forward, perhaps even. A bunch of depots can be taken out here. Disruptors with the shots will take out one more tank. And positionally, Hero is playing a fantastic game. The Viking count is not high enough. That means that the Colossus reigns supreme on the ground. At least against the Marines. And honestly, the Disruptor count is high enough to deal with the Marauders as well. Here we go. We have another big attack coming in. As um, I do believe that there is enough here for Hero to break this position, or at least significantly damage this position. GG gets called. Hero, with a uh, big bank still behind this, is going to put himself on match point. And in our fourth game, we have an in-base command center with a marine interfactory. And for people not too aware with Terran build orders, 
This basically is a factory timing that is extremely fast, not as quick as a two gas, but still quite quick. I think it's gonna be like 12 seconds slower or so than two gas, um, but with very little Marines. And that means that, for example, a, an early Zealot could be very frustrating to deal with if your command center is on the low ground. So often we see this particular build order uh, being executed with a high ground command center. Ooh, the Adept's gonna try and engage, gets one shot off. Three Marines versus an Adept usually is a fight that the Adept really doesn't want to take for an extended period of time. Gonna wanna shade up here, yeah, I love that. It's good play. And there's no way this Adept shade finishes. As uh, now the Cyclone's gonna try and come down. This uh, Adept probably will end up falling, just barely. Oh, actually, yeah. I think it would have had two more shots. So the way that it works right now in this matchup is that the, the current Cyclone, if it locks on to an Adept, you have one shot time to respond with a Shade. So if you Shade away um, just after the first lock-on shot of the Cyclone, you will keep your Adept alive. This is a an interaction that I think is quite cool, where if the Protoss is paying attention, you can always keep the Adept alive, but the Cyclone can still kind of push it away. The cyclone can push the Adept away, but it can't kill it consistently, which, you know, it's cool. That's a skill-based interaction, which I, I generally like. Hero here is going to go into Oracle, into Robo, but also with three gateways. Oh, this is the type of build that gives me a headache, let me tell you. He's also trying to hide the Oracle. Or, well, he wasn't trying to hide it, he was just hiding it and then go in the moment he believes his opponent is going to move out. Which is cool, but his opponent didn't really go for a move out. So, I mean, this Oracle's still going to get 3-4 worker kills, that's nice. Um, I think it should have gotten more, actually. I think the control here was pretty sloppy. Actually, it was very sloppy here, considering this is Hero controlling it. It's going to get 3 worker kills, a little bit of mining. Uh, mining denied. 4 kills. Okay. Gets a scout, sees that it's like a a 2 on 1 type of setup. You have a fast forge coming in with a void ray, an immortal, a robo bay. Oracle's gonna stay alive. Um, I'm not familiar with void ray openers in this matchup, as in, like, a, as part of a composition. Theoretically, in my mind, Void Rays kind of suck. Like, it, it, in, in an army comp, they're not great. Um, you know, they need to be really close to the opponent to, to deal damage. And if they're close, Marines can just kind of eat them alive. Vikings are quite good against them. But from an opening perspective, Oracle into Void Ray is kind of like playing Phoenix Colossus, but with less need for a high amount of stargate units and thus perhaps a greedier nexus or more infrastructure as a possibility and i think that's kind of what we're seeing we're seeing a focus on a lot of gateway units usually you have like four or five phoenixes right but hero instead says hey i'm just gonna get one or two void rays to kind of deal with any air threats that could potentially be coming in and i have the oracle for harassment so you have earlier harassment than usual and you still have some of that air control of course it's not the same level of air control four phoenixes really dominate skies while one void ray defensively can be powerful but doesn't really dominate the sky because it doesn't have the same type of speed it's a really quick tech though behind this extremely fast plus one as well i find this kind of cute i i'm curious how maru is going to respond to this so to me it feels like a, a, a double marine drop or something could be much stronger against this type of setup but maru actually is opting for a tank timing with a lot of marines which i don't think is necessarily going to be much better this voider is going to be in a bit of trouble uh, this is one of the issues that I described earlier with the Void Rays, that it needs to get so close to deal damage. I almost feel like it shouldn't really be in the main army, perhaps even on a separate control group, as this Pylon's gonna get sniped. Oracle's not here anymore, that's gonna make vision, matters of vision, uh, a lot trickier for, uh, for a hero. You have Viking production starting practically instantly, so we had, what, three Medivacs into Viking? More tanks on the way as well. So Maru's plan here is perhaps to, to keep map control 
And then go for like a slow push with tank Viking. Maybe add some turrets in there. We have a single Marine going to the left. Oh, it's going to find that Void Ray. I like that the Void Ray is being split off though. I actually think this is the correct play. Void Ray being very aggressive. Very, very aggressive. See Hero behind this going into Templar Archives. This is being scanned. Look at that. That's an interesting scan. So it gets a lot of info. Sees that there's nothing building on the Stargate. Sees a Robo active. Sees a Templar Archive. And Templar Archives is a is a timing building. That's a building that, as a Pearls player, you usually build when you want to go for a timing. These Archons are not great in the late game due to the, due to the existence of the Ghost. But they are pretty freaking great against, well, tank compositions without Ghost. And... More Immortals now being built. Ooh. Tanks getting a couple of big shots. Vikings helping out in the sky as well. I think a Zealot, like kind of a a run by to delay reinforcements or to kill reinforcements would be big. Tanks getting a lot of shots in here. Really a lot of shots. And I think we'll need some type of flank in order to deal with this. Super Battery needs to be activated. We're gonna see that here. I can only imagine Void Ray in the sky not dealing that much damage. Super Battery not active yet. The Vikings are still dishing out a lot of damage. Mama is kind of walking over his opponent here. Just gonna catch a, a straight W. Wow. This is not really what I had expected at all. Maru going for a, a plus one timing attack, which was extremely committed with a lot of tanks and Vikings, and gets the win. Hero just dies. Which feels kind of weird, because in my mind, Hero himself was setting up for an attack. Of course, uh, kind of signaling towards that with the fact that he had a prism, Templar archives, high gateway count. It always feels weird to me that when you're trying to... I don't want to call it necessarily an all-in, but... A very committed attack on a relatively low worker count. He didn't have a fourth base, wasn't taking his gases on the third base. That you die yourself. Um, because I think theoretically, like committing to a low worker count and high infrastructure and a Templar archive is pretty much what you want against what Maru was doing as well. So... If you then end up losing, then there's a couple of options. And the first option is, is that perhaps your build sucks. The second option is that um, look, Terran is imbalanced. <laughs> Even if you play perfect, there's nothing you can do about it. I don't think that's the option that I would uh, say is what happened here. I, I think what happened is that the, the unit movement there wasn't great out of here. I think he took a lot of free shots against the tanks. I think the zealots were used in an ineffective way. Um, there was no flank. There was no reinforcement cut off. And I think the position was given away perhaps a bit too freely by Hero there on the high ground. Um, th th that's kind of what I feel. Because I, I feel theoretically the, the, the response, as in what he built and at what timing he built it, was correct. But then, of course, you have the second part of how do you use those units. And he got the right units, but then I think the use of them was... Um, yeah, not, not, not quite great. I, I really don't think it was. So, that's something to always kind of keep in mind. Or, of course, that was really broken. That's a possibility. Yeah, I don't want to dismiss that too early either. Yeah, we, <laughs> we keep that in our back pocket. Just in case. Ooh! Reaper's actually going to die here. That's big. That's a big deal. We once again see a... I think this was a no-scout out of Hero. 19 core, 19 Nexus. Blind battery. Adapt Stalker, Adapt. Fast Phoenix. And look at this. Maru's walking into this. <laughs> That's not what you want. This is absolutely not what you want. Second barracks. Medevac. Mines are going to move out. It's going to get caught instantly here. This is the... I don't want to say this is the worst case scenario, but... I personally can't imagine a, a scenario which is worse. Maybe if it was further across the map. Like, three mines against Phoenix is really sucks. Because it means your extra factory units are going to be delayed. Which is exactly what you don't want. Now, you, you can't put on any pressure on your opponent, right? Hero looks at this, thinks himself, wait, three factory units that are mines? They don't really contribute in a push. So, Hero is not going to be afraid of any push in the near future. Or, if there's going to be a push, it's going to be significantly easier to deal with. Nice one. Almost gets it, but not quite. <laughs> I always love it. It's so great. Like, it's like this type of trick when it fails in tournaments always makes me happy. I know I sh it shouldn't make me happy, but it does. I can't help it. It's the same when Maru earlier missed his Reaper bounce on side Delta. I was like, yeah, that's fantastic. You hate to see it. Um, 
We have a Phoenix Colossus follow up here. So no more Void Ray Colossus shenanigans. Maru's still gonna go for a fairly dedicated attack. He has a third barracks that's building a tank lab. He's gonna research something. We have a Nexus on the way already and a battery done. I mean, if this push deals any damage, I'd be shocked. I, I really would be. Uh, in a straight up engagement, they should never do anything unless we get some serious miscontrol. We have a good Phoenix count. We have an Immortal on the way. Nexus isn't done yet, which obviously does suck a little bit. And the lift up here, I'm not a, a, a massive fan of, really. In general, I'm not a huge fan of how this fight is going so far. Uh, we have another battery that Hero can just retreat to. He really wanted to fight very far forward, and as a result, loses a bunch of Phoenix. The super battery now gets activated. New battery active as well. Hero's still going to defend this. Ends up losing two Phoenixes, though. And resources lost-wise, this is fine. So, I still think... Looking back at the overall setup in the game right now, Hero is in a good spot. But if we take a look at that individual fight, I think Hero could have performed significantly better. Like his position should have been better right now, even better than it already is. Because let's face it, Hero here uh, is getting pretty close to victory in this game. He's pushing this back. There's a CC on the low ground, which is a huge liability. Hero's not going to push in. If there, if there were two more lifts here on these Phoenixes, I think Hero can push in and clear the CC, and at that point, the game pretty much ends straight up. For now, though, Maru gets to survive. It's going to go into Double Raven, Interference Matrix Research. As Hero is looking for damage. 64 workers to 49. He's taking a fourth base. It has a lot of workers. Low infrastructure still. No good upgrades. But I don't actually think it matters very much. I'd love for Hero to just kind of instantly push to 76, 77 workers, six gases, and just really establish himself as the economically dominant player in this game. I think that would be a big deal. Maybe even a second forge is something that I would like to see before adding extra gateways. Because you know you're going to be fairly safe from here on out. Your opponent is building tanks. You saw double ravens. These are all units that... I don't think are very scary at this point. Um, so you can set up for basically an, a, a defensive timing, like a minute and a half, two minutes from now, which is a really, really long time. Like two minutes into the future, if you can plan for that, like you can delay your gateways, you can just get such an insane work account. They went straight to 74 workers, which is really what I like to see. Um, maybe even a couple more, I think would have been nice. There's five Phoenixes out, sixth one on the way. Ooh. No second forge, though. I mean, you once again get this weird gateway set up all around the map. I'm not entirely sure what the purpose of this is, except getting expensive stuff around the map. It's kind of like a flex. You're buying a, a Gucci shirt that is just completely white. Congratulations. Just paid 10 times as much for a white shirt. If even only 10 times. It's gonna get a plus one air weapons upgrade. Second Stargate? And Storm. Not quite sure what to think of this. I am not quite sure what to think of this. We have a fourth base done. We have eight gases. Phoenix is still up in the sky. Is Hero actually planning on on going for for carriers here or just mass Phoenix? No, he's not producing Phoenix anymore. He's gonna warp in some Templar. What's the Templar count currently? We're at three. And this is gonna be fine defensively. Like, there's absolutely no way Hero dies in a fight. It is simply impossible. There are zero Vikings out. The marine count is too high. We have Templar to feed back Ravens. We have, well, soon Storm. The, the Storm. There's good vision on the bottom side of the map, which means that any, you know, any threats can't really materialize there. Fort Base is moving over out of Maru. If I'm Hero, I want to fight this army ASAP. I want to fight this army ASAP if I'm Hero. Here we go. Phoenixes are going to start chasing a little bit, and their armor missile gets utilized as well. Get a big fat storm. 
mines do get the connection still. Mine count practically non-existent at four. Two tanks are out. Two Vikings. Mine from the side could hit something. And their armor dealing quite some damage. That's a big mine hit. Gonna get one Phoenix. Almost kills two more. I'm not even sure if I actually, actually killed the Phoenix. Or if it just almost killed both of these guys. Mine moving in forward. It's not gonna get cleared in time. Hero tanking a lot of mine shots in this game, honestly. As he starts moving in forward. There's still no ghosts. Oh no, there are two. There are two ghosts right now. Are two ghost carrier as well starts behind this two carriers third target on the way would love to see plus two uh, air weapons 50 c starts here comes hero planetary is done though this is a scary position to attack into guardian shield not being used either do we have some storms no we don't not really at least it's gotta be pushed back completely as the uh, interference matrixes are Putting in serious work as well. Perhaps we can get an anti-armor here at this point. Or more interference. It's going to be another interference. It's going to be another one. It's both of these Colossus in serious trouble. And at least one of them is going to fall. The second one. Does that die? No. Gets to survive with 2 HP apparently. Not a whole lot of HP. Fifth base is going to get cancelled. Maru now takes control of this map. So we have some Zealot run bys going across. It's probably good for him, because if Maru decides to attack or fight right now, I actually think Hero would be in some serious trouble. There's really not that much here for Hero. 2-2 two -two is about to finish up as well. Like, a 2-2 two -two timing here could be deadly. If Maru decides to just move across the map, there's not a lot of batteries. There, there's no cannons here. In two batteries... I guess we can have a super battery. More carriers on the way, but we haven't even started plus two air weapons yet. There's no plus three ground weapons coming in either. So the upgrades are going to go in favor of Maru. We do have a second starport now on the way, finally. That's fairly late, given the fact that we already have, what, like three extra command centers coming in. Going up to seven bases. Is Maru splitting off his army in two parts right now? Scanning forward, trying to figure out what his opponent is up to. Has he seen the carriers? I'm not sure if that's the case. He's going to see it soon, though. Carriers will defend the right side, as this uh, left side fifth is going to get cancelled once more. As the second time a fifth base is going to get taken out. A couple of marines and marauders being split off to try to take out some workers. Okay, scans will reveal the fact that we have a decent carrier count here. Two more starports start practically instantly, and I think a second armory would be wise as well. Vikings, they love their damage upgrades, but they should also really care about their armor ups. Already has level 1 ship weapons. It's gonna, let, it's gonna get level 2. We have a, a turret ring kind of being constructed here instantly. 12 turrets coming down. 85 workers here for Maru. So we have a late game. Carrier's been... I don't want to say I've been making a comeback because I don't think they ever were really popular in this matchup. But they've been moving to the, the forefront of this matchup in the late game as of late. Which is kind of cool to see. It's always nice to see like some proper late game units. Uh, being used in PvT. I always love seeing battle cruisers in this matchup. I wish we had more BC builds in Terran versus Protoss. As um, these two Archons are going to fall, and these Templars, as a result, are also going to be in trouble. Main army is going to show up, but not before three Templars will end up dying. Fort won't get sniped too. That's a very good trade for Maru when it comes to the gas. Salads at the same time also moving in. A lot of them are going to get sniped, and the others just die to the planetary. There's like seven Zealots going down there. Two Archons and four Templar. Yeah, that's a serious amount of cash that the uh, hero just threw out of the window. And just now he's going to get his fifth base set up. Maru meanwhile been mining on six. Still hasn't started armor upgrades on his Vikings, which I really consider to be a pretty significant error. We have seven carriers versus just 13 Vikings. Army composition-wise, I think I'm much preferring the position that hero is in. As long as the Interceptors manage to get out. Of course, we do have Ravens for anti-armor. As well as perhaps for Interference Matrix. Could take out some of these carriers like that. Three more carriers on the way. 3-2 upgrades coming in. No plus three uh, air weapons yet, though, for our Protoss player. So Maru believes he can move on the map. I think one of the cool things that Maru always used to do is these big turret walls into kind of like Liberator Viking. I always felt that was so powerful whenever he executed that. Maru, one of these players that is so good at... Yeah, here we go. 
It's kind of turret pushing forward on the map. That's such a Maru-esque play. Here we're seeing it once more. I got a stim forward. I'd prefer if you wait a little bit. It's gonna get a big anti-armor missile though. Where's the Vikings? Vikings in the far back. Vikings usually are in the front to deal with the chasing carriers. This Raptor's actually hitting quite big. Turret's not quite done yet. Big time warp being uh, used as well. This carrier's now in a little bit of trouble, but their interceptors are out, and that means that perhaps it's the Vikings that are in trouble. Bunch of Vikings going down. 12 remain, 8 carriers still alive. There's a Colossus here with minus 1 HP. Oh, it's 2 HP. Practically minus 1. Interceptors not coming out quite yet. If the interceptors ever get out, these carriers are going to be real freaking powerful. Nice zoning storm. Very nice zoning storm. We have 9 carriers versus 12 Vikings. There are 5 ghosts, 8 marines. Turret's really kind of the backbone here for Maru. Plus three halfway done. We have no extra upgrades coming in for our uh, Terran player, which is kind of weird. I, I really think upgrades in these air battles are so important. We still only are working with a single armor. No, we have two armories, actually. I don't know where the second one is. Is it on the low ground? Oh, it's over here. But yeah, neither being used currently, which is a kind of a blunder. Ooh. This also is kind of a blunder, as uh, Maru was not in position. Despite the sensor tower... Inter interceptors now coming out and that could be a huge that could be a huge issue because once the interceptors are out these vikings don't really stand a chance interceptor count is still healthy as fi at 50 as well this base is just gone if hero decides to attack but he decides to go back which is a wild maneuver he had all of his interceptors out he was ready to go it felt like now he's going to start attacking these rocks. With the rocks, interceptors are also out. This is the hardest part, because it takes like 3-4 seconds. Can we get a target fire here? No. Interceptor's going to return back in. Uh, the control here out of Hero is... Fairly subpar. Fairly mediocre. He, he wants to push, but he's had some opportunities for fights that he didn't take. And now he wants to fight. 24 Vikings right now, though. That's three Vikings per carrier. I think that's enough. As long as you can deny some of the big storms, maybe get a big concave on the Vikings. I do believe that Hero is going to be in a really good spot. Nuke's not going to really hit anything. Planetary will fall. A lot harder to kill the moment the planetary has the, <laughs> the armor upgrade. Interceptors just deal less damage. Sixth base on the way. 3 2 upgrades. No air armor upgrades. Blink now coming in as well. I think if you have an army like this, getting rid of the Colossus is almost always a good call, because Colossus freaking suck. It's like the ground army is going to consist of, of, of Ghost Marauder, and the air army is going to be Viking. So the Colossus really doesn't have much to do here. Would you have, rather have another carrier or another Colossus, or three more Templar or Colossus? You'd rather have Templar then. Two Templar and a Prism or something. or Mothership. I think the Colossus are a waste of supply. It's all about... Kind of the, the quality of supplying your army at this point. As the Vikings coming in from an angle once again. Interceptors not out. Stalkers not in position. It's minus two carriers there. This is why we sometimes see Tempest being uh, kind of added into the mix as well. So we get some zoning storms. One. We get some more zoning storms. Yes. That was good. Still have a bunch of storms available as well. I'm going to try morphing some Archons here. The Vikings continue to move up. Ghost flank from the top. Gets every single Templar. And that's going to be an issue. As the Vikings start taking out individual carriers. Disruptor shots coming in from a distance. Is not going to be good enough. And Maru is going to push his opponent back. And this was a really, really bad fight. Vikings going to land with good damage output, of course. Instantly landing, too. Does they have the smart servos? No, it doesn't. It'll go even quicker. Caduceus Reactor now being uh, researched is the, the regeneration of the uh, Medivac energy upgrade. A very good upgrade. I would say it's underrated, but I think it's actually perfectly rated by most professional Terran players. I think it's underrated uh, by, by, by the viewers and perhaps by casters at times. 
But I think pro players actually valuing this upgrade for what it is. I thought it was going to be one of these upgrades we don't see a lot, but we see it fairly frequently, sometimes even before Liberator range, which is not the case this time around, but sometimes has been. It's a pure ground army at this point for uh, Hero. He's going to try and snipe some of these Metavex. Vikings are going to land. There's a lot of supply in Vikings, which is not necessarily great for Maru, because Vikings are in particular bad against uh, Disruptors. They're okay against ground units, but they're really bad against Disruptors. And it feels like the army is just big enough anyway. Maru's gonna start moving in forward. Liberator sieging up. Disruptor shot comes out. Vikings in the sky. As uh, this carrier kind of playing into that. Liberator's once again moving forward. Here comes the Disruptor shot. Can he dodge that? Yes, goes to the air. Very neat. Liberator still continuing to push him forward. As I don't really see how Hero is going to be holding this base with uh, about 15 zealots, uh, 4, 6, 7, 7 stalkers and half a disruptor. Vikings on the ground really helping out here. As long as the Liberators are zoning out these disruptors, the Vikings actually deal a crap ton of damage. Very powerful unit. Even uh, in, in just straight up ground damage. It doesn't quite beat a stalker one on one, but if you hit an EMP it definitely does. Good damage output for sure. Meanwhile, Maru continues expanding as well. And I think that's the power of Maru. He's not a guy that is happy with just taking good fights, having good army control, good army composition, good army movement. No, he also just continuously expands behind it. He's just taking bases. He's eating up bases. Even if he isn't mining from them, he's just taking them, having vision there, making sure his opponent isn't there. Which is cool to see as, uh, once again, our Terran player continues to move in forward. Hero... Very close to dying here. Love that Maru decided to just kill that rather than run away. It's the hallmark of the good Terran players. Gonna be like, hey, I can I can just right click that. I don't have to run at all times. Sometimes I can right click it, and that's fine. Single disruptor coming in forward. It's not gonna get a hit. Liberator's now getting in position to uh, pretty much eliminate the final mining base of Hero as Hero slowly but surely bleeding out in this game after his uh, very poor carrier control. In the late stages of, well, or the early stages of the late game, maybe. And Maru just gets a W here. Wins the series 3-2. to two. Kind of a kind of a bummer. It really felt like we were setting up for a, a solid late game. But the fights over here in the middle, the hero was taking, just kept costing him like one, two carriers at a time. While never really committing to a fight. When you're playing carriers, you want to go all at once. You don't want to fight over a prolonged period of time. That's, that tends to be good for the Terran player, actually. So, you know, they can snipe an individual unit, heal up a little bit, that type of stuff. Um, if you want to fight over longer periods of time, you're, you're going to need to mix some Tempest into the mix and use their range advantage. That's not what happened here. Maru ends up winning this series with a 3-2 to two score. Solid games all around. Fun to watch. Hope you all enjoyed it too. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll see all of you next time for a new video. Bye-bye.